I wanted to share a few points of context about this event and a few words of thanks. So context, how did this event come into being? It was a way of exploring our relationship between Judaism, between Judaism and science. You'll hear momentarily um, how this evolved in the larger Jewish community, but the reason that we wanted to take time to think about this is the following. As members of a Jewish community, whether we're Jewish or not, in the 21st century, we can't only look at our own texts. We need to understand how our texts and how our conceptions of ourselves function in a larger society. So for example, next Saturday, and I'm gonna give a plug, next Saturday, we're having a speaker named Ian Manuel come and speak at the synagogue. Ian Manuel is not a Jewish man, but he's speaking about his experience going from incarceration to redemption. Why are we bringing such a speaker? Because as Jews, we need to understand that our story from thousands of years ago, going from slavery to redemption, has some parallels, and what is our role as a Jewish people in understanding that in people's experience today? Simultaneously, when we think about science and Judaism, again, we want to link these ideas. It's why this past October, we brought Scott Shea, an author, who wrote the book In Good Faith, where he explored many issues, including religion's relationship to science, and we wanted to continue to explore that this morning. The second reason that this is an important program in particular today is because over the next few weeks, starting yesterday in the Torah, actually last week, we've been telling our foundational story of becoming a people. You see, the book of Genesis, which we finished at the end of December, is a story about a family. But the book of Exodus is the story of a people. And what does it mean to be part of the Jewish people? Um, is that based solely on genetics, those of us who were in Goshen, those of us who showed up at Sinai, or of course, is it based not just on genetics, but on values, commitments, um, and more? And that's something we're gonna explore over the course of the morning, including when we get to the panel on conversion. So I'm thrilled to be part of this congregation where we as modern Jews can explore how to engage in the world and how this speaks to our conceptions of peoplehood and identity. Lastly, there are a few people that I'd like to thank, and since um, we're not gonna be necessarily together as a full group until the end of the day, because um, there's so many different pieces, I wanna thank a few people. First, Rabbi Jeff Middleman, who um, will be speaking in a moment. Rabbi Middleman and I met 10 years ago as part of the inaugural um, fellowship of Rabbis Without Borders at Klal, and he has founded a organization called Sinai and Synapses, which he'll speak about. I wanna thank our entire facilities and administrative team for all of their help in setting up for today. Alan Herman, our executive director, and Shelby Pertle, and our administrator, have been here since before eight o'clock this morning, making sure that everything needed to be as is. I wanna thank all of our presenters, both those in the sanctuary and those who are gonna be working with our kids for taking the time to work on this event and come. And of course, I wanna thank um, the most amazing co-chairs, Doctors Michael Gottlieb and Ross Levine. Both of them in their real lives are saving lives all the time. But they have given me a, some time, more than just some time, a lot of time um, to understand how they can take their passion of being scientists and link that with their passion for being Jewish. And I have really enjoyed the time that Ross and Michael and I have worked together to plan today's event. And so I hope you enjoy. And um, at the end of the day, just so you, Ross will give you the arc of the day, but at the end, we'll have an opportunity to think about where we go from here. And tomorrow, you're gonna get an email from me um, asking if there are future ideas, future events that you wanna be part of the planning. Please don't hesitate to reach out. So with that, I welcome Rabbi Jeff Middleman from Sinai and Sinai. Thank you, Rabbi Ain. Thank you to all of you for being here, for our speakers. It's a very, very exciting and dynamic day. I'm excited to be present for this. Uh, as Rabbi Ain mentioned, I'm the founding director of an organization called Sinai and Synapses. It's my full-time position as of uh, 2013. We started this about five years ago, realizing that there is a big challenge in the wider public sphere, which is that there's a perception in the American society right now that there are two sides that are opposing each other. One is generally viewed as scientific and educated and tends to be politically liberal, and the other tends to be religious and politically conservative and sometimes uneducated, and there's a belief that if you take anything from 
either of those columns, you've got to take everything from that column, and it's even better if you demonize the other side. The conversation has gone from, well, you might have a point to I'm right, to I'm right, you're wrong, to uh, I'm right, you're evil. And in my mind, that conversation is actually totally counterproductive. And so what we had to do through Sina and Synapse is to be able to say, facing some of the biggest questions that we deal with in our world today, genetics, but also climate change, technology, questions of how do we know what we know, how can we talk to each other, we always want to start with what is the best, most accurate science that we have, so our tagline is scientifically grounded, and then use that to be able to enhance ourselves as individuals and as a society and the world, and so our second part is spiritually uplifting. And so we run a variety of different programs and projects. We have an interfaith fellowship, and our signature program is one that you all are a part of today, scientists in synagogues, because one thing that we have discovered is that in the Jewish community, the challenge is not getting Jews excited about science. It's about getting Jews excited about Judaism. And so can we use science as a way to engage the Jewish community in new ways? And so this is actually the set, second iteration of this project. We had one project that started in 2016, and now a next iteration that started in 2018. And we have reached about probably 7,500 people in grassroots local areas to be able to explore questions from how is technology changing who we are to the natural and the man-made to the science of compassion to genetics to can we end disease. There are synagogues in Oregon and Washington DC and Boston and Houston and all over North America, Toronto, and speakers have included a Nobel laureate, Lowell Kaufman, who won the Nobel Prize in 1981, to uh, Sylvester James Gates, who was not only on Obama's Science Council, he was in the TurboTax ad, to be able to say, you don't have to be a genius to do TurboTax, <laughs> um, to Pekka Sinervo, who was not only one of the discoverers of the Higgs boson, he was also the president of his reform synagogue in Toronto. And so these are all sorts of different projects to be able to explore how can we integrate science and Judaism more effectively, more constructively to be able to have a better conversation in our public sphere. Um, as you've registered here, we've actually, we're gonna include you on our weekly email list. About once a week we send out some sort of short blog post or video from a rabbi or a pastor or a scientist to be able to explore some of these interesting questions. You can always opt out, so that's very easy to be able to do, but we figure that if this is something that you're interested in, that you will be interested in some of these other kinds of big questions from amazing thinkers and wonderful people who are aiming to be able to elevate the public discourse. So please feel free to come out uh, afterwards and ask questions. I'm happy to talk about Sinai and Synapses and the work that we're doing, but I'm thrilled that Sutton Place is part of this initiative and to be able to really explore some fascinating questions with some amazing speakers. So thank you very much. Synagogues Initiative, uh, an initiative, as she said, that promotes dialogue between scientific and religious communities in order for each of us to gain a better understanding how the world, biological and natural world, operates and how the, the rest of our lives have, bring meaning to our understanding of that world. Uh, when the opportunity presented itself as part of a process to submit an application uh, to, sign up to scientists in, in synagogues, uh, we quickly recognize the appropriateness of today's, today's topic, who is a Jew, and collectively, who are the Jewish people, um, and that, that would satisfy the mission of the, of the initiative. We recognize the Jew one way or another, some, some with more literal, literal interpretation, others more figuratively, except on faith, the biblical narrative, as the rabbi, in essence, pointed out, as our origin story, 
for the relationship by descent of the Jewish people to each other historically down to this day. The biblical narrative, of course, is also accepted as the origin of Judaism as a religion with its attendant practices, traditions, and teachings that also have been handed down. We learn in Pirkei Avot, of course, that God gave the instructions to Moses, who passed it on to, to Joshua, on to the elders, and on to the prophets, and down to this very day. Uh, by way of analogy, I think we, we also understand that DNA replication, the process of transmit genetic information is sometimes error prone, that some errors, mutations get, get included along the way. And I suspect that also our teachings and traditions also get modified through descent and incorporated or contextualized as we move forward into different environments. Despite our, in our biblical narrative and our understanding in a, in a faith-based approach, I suspect that there have always been people that have sought additional evidence of fact-based, evidence-based um, identification of facts that bolster our understanding of the history of the Jews, the Jewish people, and Judaism. Efforts to obtain such information come from various sources and from scholars and students who align themselves with a variety of disciplines, including anthropologists, archaeologists, sociologists, linguists, and students of religion and religious and sacred literature. Given the significance of ancestry as the primary basis for Jewish inclusiveness, and that Jews have emphasized the importance of marriage between Jews, it's not surprising that geneticists have also looked at hereditary links among the Jewish people and among Jews. Such interest has been greatly accelerated by recent technological advances in genetics, especially with, re with regard to the sequences of DNA and so analyze such sequences using sophisticated computational methods to identify genetic relationships among people. Moreover, the availability of direct-to-consumer tests for determination of ancestry has allowed non-scientists to search for this genetic identity and relationships. To help us understand the genetic relationship relatedness of the Jewish people and the relevance of such information to the biblical narrative and to other historical evidence of, Jew, of the Jewish people, it's my privilege to introduce Dr. Harry Oster. Dr. Oster is a professor of pathology and pediatrics at Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York. He received his education at MIT and at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. He trained in pediatrics and medical genetics at Johns Hopkins Hospital and in molecular genetics at the NIH National Institutes of Health. Uh, in Maryland. For 20 years, he was the director of U the Human Genetics Program at NYU School of Medicine. Uh, his study, he's, his research <coughs> interests are on the genetic basis of, for common and rare conditions. He recognizes the opportunity to translate that information into di development of diagnostic tests for determining risk of certain genetic conditions and diseases, as well as to look at disease progression. In addition to his, that scientific interest, he's had a long-standing interest in, in the history of the Jewish people, the genetics of, the, of, of Jews, as well as the genetic interest of uh, studying Hispanic and Latino groups as well. He's organized a uh, de development of a rich data bank of, of information on the genetics of Jews, and he's written numerous books, uh, numerous articles, and published a book called Legacy on the History of, of the Jewish People. Uh, he's recently uh, had an opportunity to have a sabbatical, and he used that to uh, study the population genetics of Christians, Jews, and pagans from classical antiquity up until the Middle Ages at the, the uh, ne Netherlands Institute for Advanced Study. Uh, like many other scientists in, uh, in the field of genetics and genomics, he's recognized that there are ethical, social, and legal implications of the work that's being done. And he's been involved in lawsuits of, uh, of interest in order to ensure that there is uh, uh, no genetic discrimination uh, in our legal insurance uh, affairs. And uh, he needs to be credited for that as well as his scientific achievements. So with that, I 
call upon Harry to give us a, uh, a, a noble 